Siastok, Minden Kinek. Welcome back to a brand new season of Walking with Willie. We're here on the banks of the Duna in Lianfalu. Itvajunk Lianfalu. And our topic of today's discussion is the Hungarian Civil War. There were many, but this particular civil war occurred in the wake of the disaster in Mohac, when the kingdom was torn asunder by the Turks. And two men vied for the same crown, Ferdinand Habsburg and Sapoyai Janos, the voivode of Transylvania. This is my new ride. We call her Esmeralda. Esmeralda? Mindenki. Mindenki, Esmeralda, Leon Falu, Siget Santendre, Santendre Siget. I actually just figured out today, Santendre, Sent Andre, Saint Andre, Andre, kind of like Andrew, I don't know. Hungarian names, they dance all over the place. Either way, that's the Santendre Siget, Santendre Island. And down at the tip of that end of the island is the Siget Chuch. Look at the little Leon Falunians practicing their football. What a pitch. Love that pitch. Absolutely exquisite. And here is the Gomba Buffet. My local bar, my local pub. Great place. Gomba Buffet. The Mushroom Buffet. Eper Bor. Eat. Strawberry wine here. Kusi Zepa. Alright, we got a nice bottle of Edes Eper Bor. My friend uh, Ergie back there. She's a pink-haired, 50 or 60-year-old woman, beautiful, friendly, lover. And here we are in uh, Totfalu, across the bridge on the Santendre Siget. And we have this beautiful old church here, Arpad Hazi Saint Erzsébet. Najon Seb. We have the local police station, the Render Sheikh. Looks like they've gone home early for the day. What a better place to do a little taste test than between the Render Sheikh and the church. A pear board. Oh my god. Kimulchi. Kimulchish. Najan Edesh. Najan yo. Njots pont ketu. Guard dog. Sia kutya. Harapoch kutya. You can see on the St. Henry Seagate the agricultural. Expanse. We haven't gotten a lot of rain this year. That's why unfortunately a lot of the crops look pretty shot. A sign of things to come, perhaps. Now the Battle of Mohac, in addition to being an absolutely grievous battle from pure casualty numbers, politically it completely decimated and hamstrung the Hungarians because their entire class of nobility, for the most part, I mean not everyone, but a lot of the brave young fighting men, they were killed. Plus Masha de Glajos, the king, the little potato boy himself. Edge kichit burgunya ferfi. Edge kichit burgunya fiu. He dies, he falls off his horse, he drowns in the river. And now Hungary is left without a king. And Ferdinand of Habsburg and Sapoyai Janos, they are vying for the same crown. So Sapoyai Janos, his biggest claim to the throne is for the fact that he's Hungarian. He was born in Transylvania and he's got the Magyar blood. Ferdinand, on the other hand, he comes from the Habsburgs. He's Emperor Charles V's younger brother, and he's in charge of the Hungarian lands, ostensibly, although not in actuality yet, and more importantly, the hereditary crown lands, as the Habsburgs are fond of calling them. Places like Galicia in the south of Poland, Bohemia, Czech Republic, the Austrian territories to the east of Vienna. And now, hopefully, well, he hopes at least, Hungary's gonna be added to that mix. And his hopes for that also rest upon the fact that the Habsburgs have a treaty with the Jagiellos. The Jagiellos being the family of Lajos II, Mashadik Lajos. And the Jagiellos, in the form of Mashadik Ulaslo, Lajos II's father, had promised to the Habsburgs that they would secede to the throne if Lajos died. And Ferdinand was married to Lajos's sister, Queen Maria. And so now, Ferdinand, he wants to claim his throne that the Jagiellos had promised to him. Look at this. Nadjan Hiresh, Magyar Tsurkamara, 
the famous Hungarian longhorned gray cattle. Beautiful. There's the peasant shepherd. Wow, such a treat to see this. Surka Marha. All right, we've made it to the uh, Kishorosi, the little town at the tip of the island where the Siga Chuch is located. Look how polite they are on the uh, Kishorosi. <laughs> Kusi, Sivashen, Sivashen, Kishorosi Falu. They have two coronations. Sapoyanos is coronated in Sekish Fehervar, the ancestral seat of the kings of Hungary. Whereas Ferdinand, he's up in Pozhoin, he gets coronated. Pozhoin being modern day Bratislava, a very important city in the old Majorosag, but sort of a more Austrian influenced city. It's closer to Vienna, it's closer to the west, and that is where Ferdinand gets the holy crown. Eventually, he comes in. And he takes Buddha, he takes the holy crown itself, and is formally coronated in Sekish Fehervar as well. Sort of ironically, by the same priest that coronated Sapoyai Janos. So you can see how the loyalties are flickering back and forth depending on who has the nominal strength, on who has the crown itself. And at the moment, that's Ferdinand. Siget Chuch Figelem. Pokolozona. Oh my god, what? 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 Oh. Stop what you're doing, folks. See ya. Najan yo, Lovak. Najan yo. Oh, Tsuki Tsuki Lovak. See you, Mashlo. <laughs> Beautiful horse. Alexa would love this. Oh, I wish I could touch them, but I'm allergic. I'll be itching for the rest of this video, but I love, love, love horses. I'll bring you guys a carrot next time. Oh my God. That was, uh, <laughs> wow. All right, that's what you get when you head to the Siga Chuch. Yo, Estate. Safe estate, eh? <laughs> Safe estate. I'm gonna leave uh, Esmeralda over here. I'm sorry, Esmeralda, by the trash cans because I don't have a bike lock. I don't think anyone will take her. I mean, this is a rather spiritual place. The Siga Chuch. <laughs> Very exciting. Okay, don't kill me. Okay, there you go. A Nemzeti Park, a national park. And I hope, I sincerely hope it stays that way. I've heard some rumors, some mumbling, some rumblings that they wanted to build some god-awful luxury hotel out here or something like that. Paradicho. Okay. I see, get see, get chooch. I see, get see, get chooch. Hi ho, the Dario. Here's the see, get chooch. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. Ah. ah. This did not disappoint. And look at those early fall hues. A little raspberry patch unfolding on the hillside. Oh god damn it, this was stupid. Very, very stupid. I just had to. Alright, not that bad. Ooh. Wow. Siga chuch. Sometimes this area is covered with sand all the way out there. Okay, I think we have. I think we have some Siga chuch action in the distance. Let's go check it out. And continue our discussion about Ferdinand and Sapoya Janos because they are not to be forgotten. So now it's like 1527, heading into 1588. 1528, excuse me. And Ferdinand, he's got the crown, he's got Buddha, and most importantly, he's got the support of his older brother Charles, who he hates to have to go begging for help. The point of the matter is they're family, and he's got it, without a shadow of a doubt. Sapoya Janos, on the other hand, he's looking for someone that can buffer him against the Habsburg threat. Henry VIII, he's got other matters to be occupied with. Francis I of France, you know, he offers some nominal support but nothing really substantive. And Sapoyai Yano, she gets desperate. 
So who does he go begging for help from? None other than Suleiman the Magnificent. The very same Suleiman the Magnificent who had taken and decimated and destroyed the Hungarian kingdom in the Battle of Mohac. And Suleiman says, listen, Janos, Sapo Yai, I will help you out and I'll give you some support and I'll name you the real king of Hungary. And I'll let you have all of Transylvania in the east. But you gotta do me a favor. You gotta support me when I go storm Vienna. And I'll defeat your enemy, Ferdinand Habsburg, for you. But you gotta give me some help. And Sapoyai Janos, although a lot of his advisors are very hesitant to accept help from the Muslim Ottomans, he ends up saying yes. And most embarrassingly of all, Suleiman the Magnificent, he heads back to the grounds of Mohach, to the field which is still blood soaked from the battle two or three years earlier, and he makes Sapoyai Janos kiss his ring and pledge fealty to him, a Muslim. This is unheard of for Western Christendom to even contemplate. And for this act, Sapoyai Janos, he's excommunicated by Pope, aka Pope Clement VII. And many of the Catholic nobles, because remember, this is a time of a uh, tremendous religious fragmentation due to the Protestant Reformation led by Martin Luther earlier that very decade. And many of the Catholic nobles, they begin to side with Ferdinand, who they see as a more realistic buffer against the ultimate enemy, which is the Muslim of the Ottoman Empire. We seem to have timed this perhaps to perfection. The Siget Chuch, the sandy tip of the Centendere Siget. The people are out and about. The Gerekek playing in the woods. A pocket of light through the trees. Visegrad Castle, a pale sliver of a moon. The autumn coming into its fulminescence. A place for wedding photos. And a place to finish this discussion of Sapoyai Janos versus Ferdinand Habsburg. Istenem, Istenem, Istenem. Ich most Ferdinand Habsburg. Ich Sapoyai Janos. Harzotak. Ich Sapoyai Janos was with Suleiman the Magnificent. And it's no small deal that Sapoyai Janos has the support of Suleiman because Suleiman is quite a fearsome foe for the Habsburgs. This is pretty much the height of the Ottoman strength. And he wants Vienna, he wants Beit, he wants to storm into Austria itself and take over the Habsburg capital. And he tries with the help of Sapoyai Janos in 1528, but he's ultimately repelled. Four years later, 1532, again with Sapoyai Janos's help, but 1532, Battle of Kuseg. Juricic Miklos, the Croats, and his brave band of Hungarian troops stop Suleiman and the storming Ottoman army in their tracks at the Kuseg Var, sort of like the Hungarian version of 300. A small band of troops stops an enormous band of an enemy invader. And now, in the 1530s, Suleiman, he's got other priorities. He's got the Persians to his south. Internal instability within the Ottoman realm. And he needs to focus on those priorities instead of Hungary. And this is where Sapoyai Janos, he understands that now he cannot count on the Ottoman support and he starts to make some moves towards instead allying himself with his old foe, Ferdinand of Habsburg. Oh, not John Spiritualisch hai. Hey, vaj hai, hey. Not John Spiritualisch hai. Najmarosh. Vurutse. Vats good. Down the Danube we go. <sighs> now you know why there was so much commotion about who got to be in charge of Hungary. They wanted to come down and chill at the Siget Chuch at sundown at the beginning of September. And for that, I think you'd do pretty much anything. Particularly on a night like this. We get to 1538. 
and Sapoya Yano, she takes a new bride, Isabel Jagiello, a Polish queen with familial links to the old kings of Hungary, the Jagiellos, Masha de Kulaslo, Masha de Glajos, Keshebe, Keshebe, Shetebe, Shetebe, etc., etc. And with the alliance to the Jagiellos and his new found links closer and closer to Ferdinand, it's time to make a treaty, 1938, the secret treaty of Varad. 1938, the secret treaty of Varad. And it's kept a secret because the Sultan, he's not supposed to know. Because Sapo Yayiano, she's supposed to be the Sultan's vassal. And the Sultan is sworn enemies with Ferdinand of Habsburg. But Sapo Yayiano, she turns his coat, makes this treaty, and the treaty says that if Sapo Yayiano dies without an heir, without a son, which he currently does not have, then the Kingdom of Transylvania, the Kingdom of the East, will go to the heirs of Ferdinand and Charles V of the Habsburgs. Another deal with the devil. But it's made, nonetheless. Now, what ends up happening is that Sapo Yayanos, he makes this treaty and Isabella gives him a son and they named him Zygmond Janos. Janos Zygmond. Sapo Yai Janos Zygmond. And what happens next? Two weeks after Isabella gives birth, Sapo Yai Janos is dead. They say from a cerebral hemorrhage, but there might have been a little bit of foul play. The timing just seems too circumspect. But now we got a little bit of a problem. Because Sapo Yai Janos, he had made the Treaty of Varad under the assumption that he would never have a son. He would never have an heir. But now he does have an heir. And now he's dead. But his closest advisor in his last years, a man by the name of Brother Gidge, a friar, he wants to preserve the Sapoyai claim to the throne. So, in a fairly debaculous, 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 debaculous and debaucherous coronation ceremony that takes place in Buda Castle, the son of Sapoyai Janos, Janos Zygmunt, is crowned the new king of Hungary. He's an infant. And it's sort of a farcical affair. But now, Suleiman the Magnificent, he seizes opportunity. Because once again, the Hungarians and the Austrians are at loggerheads. Ferdinand, he wants the Kingdom of Hungary for himself. So he lays siege to Buda, where Sapoyai Jano Zsigmond and his mother Isabella and brother Gyurgy and the rest of their diminishing support is holed up. And the only chance they have at being rescued is to once again take help from Suleiman the Magnificent and his Ottoman army. The year is 1541 and Suleiman comes in and the armies of Charles V, they go scurrying like fleas back to Vienna. And Suleiman says, okay, Jano Zsigmond, you can be the king, you little six month old infant. We'll give you the crown. But guess what happens? Suleiman, he's playing a trick, as he was so wont to do. And while he's meeting with all the top loyalists to the Sapoyai cause, men like Turuk Balint, the brave general, in a tent outside of the city, the Ottomans, they come into Buda, and in a bloodless battle, they take the city just like that. Just like that, they take the city, and Buda is now part of the Ottoman Emperor and the Ottoman Empire. A position that it would maintain for the next 145 years. Now, the next century and a half is not a century that the Hungarians are particularly proud of. And yet it is a century that offers so much to the historian because this is when the makeup, the composition, the spirit of the Hungarian national identity comes into being, particularly in Transylvania, Erde, the eastern third of the now three-part country. And that is where the character 
of the next century and a half and further of Hungarian rebellion is stoked like a forge, like a cauldron, like a bonfire. The flames lick so high. And we will uncover that century and a half and the lead up to the Rakotsi Rebellion and the development of the Hajduk and the Kuruts and the Batyaruk. We will follow that century and a half over the coming weeks and the coming months because that is what I'm interested in. And I'm interested in other things too. This has been a great first episode back. I'm sure we'll get some scenes as we head out of this island on my death trap bike. The Siget Chuch, Visegrad, Najmarosh, and the Duna Kanyar. Kusanam se pen mindin kinek, and visont latashra. Thank you folks for tuning in. I shall see you very soon. Felévettem, kettőt láttam, a tükörképemet a falhoz vágtam, fürdőt vettem, fogat mostam, vécén ültem, gitároztam és vártam.